Welcome back to Fire Force Anime Review, episode number 27. This one I'm reviewing the newest episode of the anime, which is called Road to Ways. It's the 31st episode of the anime. And two new chapters of manga. 233 and 234. First, we'll talk about the newest episode of the anime, which pretty much finished up adapting chapter 112. And goes through, from what I can tell, the entirety of chapters 113 to 115. Though mostly to keep the same for what they adapt from these chapters, they do make one small change, but it doesn't really affect the story. It doesn't really harm the story at all. The episode first starts off with the group arriving in the Chinese Peninsula. And just by sheer coincidence, while they go get while the director with supplies, Juggernaut's mom shows up. Yep, his mom. And it's like I was like, okay, you have some probably some source the director's like you haven't seen your mom for a while. Why did you basically catch up? So it, apparently his his family farm is not that far from the the docks where they got there, which I thought was kind of weird. And apparently there's been a potato thief. It's a minor thing. They revealed it was another character later. They do have an anime debut of a, of a new character in this episode. Yeah, at least two of them. So they got the supplies and well. I was like, don't worry about the potato thief. We'll handle that. And she's like, next time I see you, perhaps they can bring home a Tokyo bride. <laughs> yeah, that would be interesting. Of course, Juggernaut has name for Tamaki. But the thing is, she's in love with Shira. Yep, she's in love with him. One of several characters. Uh, seems like they're like almost every single female character who's popped up in this series, who is a young, beautiful one, Tend to be in love with Shira. It's not hinted if Iris has got feelings for him. These following characters basically have got feelings for him. That have been confirmed. Hinabi, the commander of Company 5. Mocha, yeah, Maki definitely does. It's very implied that she does. Tamaki, yes. And the only woman who doesn't is the granddaughter of the captain of Company 4. But those three I can think of, the ones that have been confirmed in the series that actually do have feelings for Shira. I mean, <laughs> what what woman would not fall for this one, this guy's charms? The rest is when Shira was fighting Lieutenant Rucka. He up accidentally kissing Tamaki, which apparently that caused her to fall in love, her fall in love with him. <laughs> yep. So, oh yeah, by the way, the group is made up of Arthur, Shira, Juggernaut. And a new character made debut soon. I don't remember the guy's name. He's a black character. Along with the instructor. And Victor is here as well. So they go traveling about in the, well, gas here. Which apparently makes everybody stir crazy. Like, it makes everybody like they're high on drugs. Like, crack. And Shira used Juggernaut as like, like a, like, like a freaking, like a freaking, like, Gatling gun. Using his hands to fire. Basically imaginary bullets, which I thought was so hilarious. And Tamaki basically just rolling over the floor, basically just just basically high as a kite. And apparently Victor is the only one who actually brought bring a gas mask with him. Everyone else is affected by it, not him. And then while they're traveling, then they then they're attacked by a giant worm, which chases them. And then also we see a flying mole show up. Yeah, this mole was Austria to be the potato thief. Though they did change how they feel in the in the anime. In the manga, basically the potato fell out when he was just outside the truck. In the anime, they changed it where it's inside. Yep, and it's like, oh, he, he thinks that Juggernaut is not, is a visitor, even though he's technically he's a local. He's from the area, so he's like, oh, I'll guide you there. Tells about the wastes a little bit later, and basically we get the giant uh, creature. And well, by the way, they also see like a shape that's similar to what hap similar. That's a strange shape that probably from before the Cataclysm 20 years prior to events of the series. And they get the creature, of course, the talking mole just talks for a while, and then they stop by like in a small area. And of course, we see a crow who talks. His name is Beauty, and he's voiced by Chris Guerrero. How do I know it's him? I know his voice. <laughs> yep. And of course, take Shira to scout ahead this one particular area, and they come across Asamasru, which they refer to as a tabernacle. And then, of course, Victor confirms, yeah, 
That's Asamaru. Despite the fact it was built by Vulcan's ancestors, so they go to it. And they see like a forest. They go to a local forest that's right near there. And they see apparently in this forest, looks like it could be a possible city used to be here. We see a car where it's covered by a tree and an old traffic light, which that was interesting. And then the episode ends basically first with a confronted by a bunch of hellhounds. Oh yeah, I almost forgot to mention this. When they're camping, they actually come by a nearby area where it's covered with infernos. And they, they probably think it should, but it would take too much time to kill. They got all of these. Yeah, it it'll basically take the entire fire forge to take out this whole group of people. This whole group of, of infernos. And of course, well, the instructor basically mentions that they're not military. They're just basically pe people to rest. But Shira's like, I'm a hero. I want to basically help out. And well, the episode ends basically with him getting a... Talk, he gets heard something from the Doyle Link. Yeah, he reveals they reveal to the, to the mold that the reason we're here is for a research trip, investigating the Doyle Link. And that's it for the episode. Good episode! Great setup for what, what's going to happen here. Yeah, it's something of this episode adapted like roughly three and a half chapters this episode, which wasn't too bad. Yeah, it's something that they actually stopped at the end of chapter 115. Oh, in case you're wondering how many chapters are left to adapt, seven. Yep, seven. Knowing this anime, the way... Now, it seems as though with the last arc of the series, it took a while just to adapt the previous arc. Yeah, it took like a bit long. It took like a few of us, like one episode more than, than last time. Yep. So, my guess is the way this arc is going to go, it'll probably wrap up in just three episodes if they do like three chapters an episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's probably going to do. I still think they're going to get to Hydra Industries arc. That's probably as far as they're going to go with the season. But who knows? And this is only episode 7 out of 24. They're not even halfway yet. But they're getting there. But yeah. Now, moving on to new chapter manga chapters. First up is Guardian Angel, chapter 233. Chapter starts off with a flashback where we see that, well, we see Shira seeing show. His little brother. He's like so cute. Hey, Angel. If he's a hero, he's like, woohoo, you be a hero. And then we see that Sho is talking to his mother, who's in the Adola link. And we see like an image of Jesus. Yeah, I thought this was kind of weird. Do you want to reread it? Like, he's not a hero, but he's an actual devil. Yeah, it turns out, though, it's confirmed that not only Sheer was. Done, but he was born via virgin birth, but also show. Yep, and then apparently he grows wings. Mm -hmm. He's like, My brother's an actual hero, but no one knows the truth, so I'm here to guide and protect him. Mother, if that's right, that's it, right. And of course, then Dolly closes. And he's like, "Mother, I'll stay with you forever." And apparently, he's gone back. Like, so like, let's go, Arrow. Yes, sir. So soon. Just now, it happened. The world isn't ending. He's like, "I found my answer." Someone there has been trying to deny the truth of my brother's existence, and there's so many people who who would do that. Time to fight back. <laughs> then we cut to Asakusa. The fact there's one pillar left, and we have to. Light citizens we get to claim the empire. And the chapter ends with basically like Can you imagine that devil? He's like, I'm not a devil. So exactly is Shira. A hero. <laughs> Pretty good chapter. Just a bit of an explanation about sh it's basically what this chapter it confirms like like Shira. Show was basically done via virgin birth. And Basically, a little bit set up for the next chapter. That's really all chapter 233 was. 234 basically has, well, Sister Sumer, who's actually the seventh pillar. The eighth pillar is actually Sister Iris. Yeah, it's something, though, like, everybody who basically is one of the pillars is basically very young. So Sumer is the oldest of all the pillars. Yeah, the first pillar is, un is someone who is basically, don't know what the poor woman's name, but she is... Well, she looks like a Sir Iris, and Sir Iris was confirmed to be the eighth. The second one is the one with the crown. I don't remember her name. 
Third pillar, Sho. Fourth pillar, Shira. Fifth pillar, I think it was the new girl who debuted in the previous arc, Inca. I don't remember who the sixth one is, but I know that Sumeri is the seventh. And we see the second pillar, like, just basically waiting to see what comes next. And we see Giovanni talking. And then the, the final pillar shows up. And then basically, the second, basically, the second uh, division shows up. With their commander, who's basically got the European shoulder things. And they basically compare the fight, and then we see the Crescent Moon. Optama Bay, the eight pillar. A tense Titan appears. The Titan itself looks like a giant wood wheel. And of course. Some people are noticing what's going on with the moon, why it, lo why it looks like it's smiling. Yeah, believe it or not, the, the creator of Fire Force also created Soul Eater, and the moon looked exactly like this in that series. But in the case of that, that was up for pure comedy, but no one acknowledged uh, why the moon looks like this. This series is actually acknowledging it, while in Soul Eater, they never did. And we see, not Shiro, it's just basically the members of the white clad soldiers and we see another time we see an, an inferno and of course well every turn infernos and of course the people put the rest also a little bit of action we see a car we see, and then we see apparently the cap that is like super head by cannon Missile. super killer head ram a fire is a is a I'm giving the Empire that tomorrow and then he hits it, and that's what chapter ends. Next chapter is called The Savior. This is actually a pretty good chapter. Though, I kind of wish that they would uh, give an in-story explanation of why the moon looks the way it does. It will be interesting, but who knows. One thing I think would be really cool for the series, if they ever get a chance to do this. Especially since both this one and Soul Eater basically done with the same person. Why did I do a crossover, though? I don't know if you can confirm if, in fact, Soul Eater can cross over with Fire Force because it takes place sort of an ultra universe. I mean, if you look at Soul Eater, that did too. So, it's possible they could, but who knows? Soul Eater looks like it was probably set like or sort of like 19th century style stuff. It's an era world. While in the case of this series, this is basically a post-apocalyptic future. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but not much else to say for these two chapters. They're good. I'm going to give both chapters a 9 out of 10, okay? So, yeah, that's it for this particular review. My next review is going to be, well, not tonight anyways. So, tomorrow I'm probably going to do about two videos tomorrow. Naruto and Case Closed. And maybe I'll get a chance to start the next anime that I want to do, do soon, which is Death March to... A parallel world rhapsody. I might be starting tomorrow. I don't know. Depends if I can finish the book or not. Okay. Though I'm going to start doing anime right after that. I will be able to that when I talk about that anime. Okay. Produce next video. Bye.